class today, everyone. My name's Austin. My name's Oliver. My name's Ashley. And we're going to teach you about pressure and sound and how they're connected. So, uh, I'd really like it if everyone could please come sit up in these first, uh, this first little area right here after I pull this away. You guys are fifth graders, by the way. Yes. Oh, you mean like sit on the ground? So, try to find a spot with just a little bit of room around you if you can. You can set up as close as you need to. So, so pressure is force over area. So, I'm going to have you guys see exactly what that feels like. So, if all of you will, as you're sitting on your knees, lean forward and put a little bit of weight on your hands, with your hands flat against the ground, and put as much weight as you can stand on your hands. Do you feel that in your arms? There's some, that's the force of your body being counteracted by the, by the area of your hand. Now, instead of being on your full hand, Try to stand on, or try to hold yourself on just your fingertips. Is that easier? Harder. Harder. Can't do it. Now, why is that? That's That's because pressure being force over area, we decrease the area, so our pressure got bigger because we have the same force. So that's basically how pressure works. For different amounts of, of force, and weight is a measurement of force. For different amounts of force over the same area, there will be less pressure for less force or more pressure for more force. And as we just saw, having the same weight, five pounds on this diagram in both cases, but a different area like we just did, you can have more pressure for less area and less pressure for a greater area. So sound is waves of pressure in the air. When you say something, it pushes some air, and that air pushes more air, and that air pushes more air, and more air, and more air, just forever, until it keeps going, until it's too small of a sound wave for you to hear anymore. So, as you can clearly see in this beautiful diagram, this person speaking is creating waves that spread out, and these waves are basically just a dense slice of air. It got kind of compressed when you said something. And this guy can hear it because it travels through the air to reach his ears. Now, if there wasn't air or something else for the sound to travel through, then you couldn't hear anything. This is also a pressure wave. When I hit it, the pressure wave extended through the table and then shot out once it reached the edges, and that's how you hear it. Yes, Zach? So since there's no air in space, can you not, is there no sound? There's no sound. There is indeed no sound. Unless... So like there's all like anything exploding in movies or anything, there's no sound. For Star Wars in space? Yes. <laughs> Almost as fake as the moon landing. So, yes. What about in the water? In the water? That's a very good question. You will still hear sound in the water, but it will sound different than it is in the air because water doesn't work quite the same as air. Air is a bunch of tiny little things bouncing around each other all the time. But water, all of the parts of water, all of the molecules are all touching each other right away. So when you say something, in air, it has to. It, it takes some time for it to, before those air poly, uh, particles hit more air particles. They have to travel some distance. But in water, when you make a sound like you snap your fingers or something like that, or you hear a whale, it goes really fast because those particles don't have to travel very very far before they hit another particle. It's the same sort of thing when I hit this, and the sound goes right away because this is really dense. And if it's already really dense, then it's easy to form dense pressure waves that, that travel through the material. Water is a good example, though, of what sound waves actually look like. So if you would drop a water droplet in water and you see the waves going out, it'd be like that. <laughs> yeah, just like that, but with a sound instead of, yeah. instead of just water. In fact, you could probably hear that drop if you had really good ears. That's true. <laughs> and loud sounds, loud sounds are basically just big waves. Like if I yell something, all I did was push a lot of air out at once, and that pushed a lot of air, and a lot of air, and a lot of air, and so on. But if I say something really soft, really quiet, I'm only pushing tiny little bits of air at a time, and that air pushes more air, and it gets quieter because there's less to keep pushing itself. 
And that's how sound works, for the most part. All right, now she's going to give you a brief uh, description of what a hypothesis is and a conclusion. I don't know if you guys have your pens on you, but do you guys want to hypothesis? Anyone? Yes. You what? Yes. Educate, yes? Yep. So we're going to have to do a science experiment. Here's the room. Each grab like a balloon or two and pass it around. Oh, I got you. So we're going to show you guys how sound can be affected by what it's going through. And okay, so more. before I start, one of the cool things that uh, scientists have nowadays is a sound frequency meter. And uh, basically they use this for uh, lots of many things. Uh, one of the big things they use it for is for like concerts. They have to uh, figure out how the sound waves are going so that everyone can hear. And when the music goes and the sound creates the waves, it bounces off of people. So if it bounces off someone, they need to figure out different angles that sound waves go down to reach everyone's ears, so it doesn't just sound weird. <laughs> and scientists use this, it's called a sound frequency meter, and it kind of helps them, as you can see, my voice is being recorded, and you can see how it's going up and down as it's catching frequency. Okay, so, now, I'm gonna demonstrate something, and I, wanna tell, I want you guys to tell me what you hear. Can you guys hear anything? Pretty quiet, right? Okay, so I want you guys on the first lines to form a hypothesis on what will happen if I inflate the balloon. And then flick it again. And then, yeah, and then flick it again. Okay, so what do you guys think? What's going to happen? The balloon will pop. <laughs> Money. What's going to happen to the sound? It could be louder because the noise going to pop. Right down. <laughs> yes. Can you handle a balloon? You didn't get a balloon? Or is there no? Pass it over. Here we go. Okay, now I want you guys to try the experiment for yourself. I want you to inflate the balloon into three different sizes and then just record what you guys, oh, inflate it three different sizes and then flick it and then tell me uh, what you guys found. And make sure to draw a picture. Oh yeah, in the little box. Because when you talk, it's just regular air molecules in the air. 
Um, but when you inflate the balloon and the sound travels through it, it travels faster because it's closer together to air molecules. But when you just when you're talking regularly, they're more spread out. So that's why it's more amplified. So we've also got uh, a little video for you that is going to explain how frequency works, which is if there's a high sound or a low sound, and what the differences are between those two things. Questions about pressure or sound? No. All right. Woo. 